Greeting scientists, it's Professor Ace. Thank you for joining. Remember, like, subscribe, and share. Today, we're gonna have a true heart to heart. So let's rip it out and get down to business. Right, let's lay it out bare. So what I'm gonna teach you is an easy way to label your heart by looking at the story behind the heart. So then everything becomes logical. So the first part is important to remember that the heart has four chambers. It's divided in the upper, a upper, a lower, and then very important, a right and left. Yes, you have that right. That is your left. But remember, when we look at the heart, it's all about the patient. It's not about yours. It's the patient pers patient's perspective. So therefore, everything becomes mirrored. So remember, that is your right side, and this is your left side. So the upper section, consist out of two atriums left atrium and a right atrium and an atrium is where the blood flows into the heart the top section of the heart has to do with blood flowing into the heart the lower section consists out of two ventricles and the ventricles are responsible for blood leaving the heart so let's really revise that top of the heart in bottom of the heart out Another important thing to remember is, and this diagram shows it in color, is that the heart is also divided into a right and left side. The right side is always oxygen poor, right? Remember that, remember that the right hand side is always oxygen poor. The left hand side of the heart is always oxygen rich, which means it's full of oxygen. And that's why it's usually indicated with a red diagram on a color scheme. Right, so let's quickly start labeling with that in mind. Here I have my left ventricle, right? So it's on the left hand side, which means it's oxygen rich. Where is that blood going? Where will oxygen rich blood go? It can't go to the lungs because it has oxygen. It needs to go to the body. So if you look carefully, um, just note right here that that artery is moving underneath the blue one they laying they crossing over each other so here I have an artery because it's connected to a ventricle it's leaving the heart so it's an artery going to the body so we also call that the main artery because that's the guy that gives everything oxygen but the scientific name is an aorta then the flip side of the aorta is the artery connected to the right ventricle so remember this is a ventricle it's at the bottom part of the heart and it has to be connected to an artery because it's leaving blood out of the heart in this case the right hand side is oxygen poor so where will oxygen poor blood go you got it to the lungs so this artery is leaving on its way to the lungs and anything lung we are labeling pulmonary right so if you hear the word pulmonary that refers to lung so this will be your pulmonary artery. So look closely, it splits, right? The one going to the left, the other one going to the right. And that is because you have two lung lobes. So that would be your right there. That would be your left pulmonary artery. And this would be your right pulmonary artery. There, let's get to the atria, right? Atria is plural on the right hand side, right here there's an atria so as you can clearly see there's a hole right there so this one from the bottom is connected to the atria and then there's a hole at the top this also flows into the atria by default it has to be a vein because it's connected to atria it's a vein that's oxygen poor so where does all the oxygen poor blood come from it's second hand it's just been used so it comes from the body now this is the only one that has a strange word to it it's latin and this is called vena cava so your art your vein flowing into your right atrium is called the vena cava but check there's two one at the top and one at the bottom the one coming from the upper part of the body which is your brain and obviously the brain is the more important so therefore it's called superior and if something isn't superior so that is your superior vena cava and if something isn't superior then it's inferior yep that's your feet you don't really need them that is your inferior vena cava and that is your right side covered now let's get to the last chamber your left atria right so it's an atrium it's at the top 
it's where blood flows into the heart and in this case it's on the left hand side so it's oxygen rich so that would be connected to a vein which veins are oxygen rich where does that blood come from again very logically the only place that they can get oxygen is not the supermarket it's at the lungs so those two are coming from your left lung and then if you see these two red ones here at the back they are coming around the back of the heart and then underneath there you can't see the little dots but they they enter the atrium on that side so that would be your left pulmonary veins and these would be your right pulmonary veins and I hope that helped to simplify it if you know where it's at top or bottom you know if it's coming in or out and if you know it's coming in or out you know which blood vessel it would be right then there are four valves that we are found in the heart now a valve is a one-way door and that helps prevent the blood from flowing back so there's a valve between the atrium and the ventricle on both sides and then there are valves between the ventricle and the arteries leaving it right so there's one right there and there it looks like a butt sticking out there that's the other one so let's quickly talk about this one right here so it's responsible for controlling the blood flow from the atria into the ventricle right. so it should close as, as soon as the atria relaxes so that's another little timeout advert break your heart have a double pump motion if you've ever seen a screen monitor where the heart goes zzz, tit, 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 tit. so if you ever wondered why the heart has a double spike look at the, the walls of the atria how thin they are it doesn't take a lot of strength to pump the blood from the atria into the ventricle that is your small spike right so these two white ones they are the valves that control the blood flow between the atria and the ventricle closely look at this one and this is key in naming it you see that it only has two tendons connecting it to the wall what do we call a cycle with only two wheels it is a bicycle in this case it is a valve so we call it the bicuspid valve these are both cuspid valves that's what it's called bicuspid because it has the two tendons also known as the mitral valve on the other side of it there are three tendons connecting it to the wall of the heart what do we call a bicycle with three wheels it's a tricycle so therefore it is a tricuspid valve okay so easily identified by the connectors you can just need to remember they are called cuspid and then you can figure that out and then the last two is the one-way valve that lets blood flow from the ventricle out into the um, the pulmonary artery so it's the valve wait for that controls blood between the heart and the pulmonary the lung so therefore it is simple as your pulmonary valve so that is your pulmonary valve in your pulmonary artery and then the one hanging out there at the back uh, that is the valve that controls blood that flows from the ventricle out into the aorta so it's the valve connected to aorta and as simple as that it is the aortic valve check this is called the septum this middle section because it separates the heart from right to left the septum separates and then the last very important part here is the apex it sits right here at the bottom of your rib cage and there's a small little cartilage there and when they do CPR and they press down on your chest that little cartilage touch the apex and the minute it touch the apex the heart starts reacting and it starts beating and the moment it beats it gives oxygen where there's oxygen there's respiration where there's respiration there is life and that is the cycle of life please continue to watch for some more epic scientific stories